All right, welcome back. We're going to go into session two here. 101 things to do in a Bible quizzing practice. You can pull out that document here. This is available for download at SeniorBibleQuizzing.com. And this has been a dream of mine for several years now. And over the last six months or so, we've been working with the General Youth Division to finalize this document and make it a reality. And um, the graphics, all the neat design, as well as the uh, design of the inside of the document was done by Heather Poland um, from Wisconsin. And we really appreciate all of her hard work. And uh, so thanks to the General Youth Division for making this possible. And so we're gonna go through this document. And I wanna highlight for you some of the things in here that I have found to be very successful over the last seven years here in Dublin and some ideas from people around the country that have been very, very good as well. So all of these are not my ideas, but uh, there are quite a few of these that are ideas from different coaches around the country. So this is really a compilation document and I think it, it just goes to show how much the quiz community can help each other. You don't have to reinvent the wheel at your local quiz practice. So we have 10 chapters inside this document and each one highlights different things that you can do at your local practice. And so we'll open up with chapter one. And chapter one is really the heartbeat of what you do as a coach. Your job is to motivate a young person to do something extraordinary. It is not normal for a teenager to memorize 500 scriptures over an eight month span so well that they can quote them word for word. That doesn't happen on a regular basis. There are many preachers and teachers around the country who have never memorized 500 verses in their life, much less do it as a teenager over an eight month span. So this is an incre incredible ministry and for the, you can make the same argument that what we essentially do in Bible quizzing is use a $7 trophy to motivate a 7-year-old to learn 170 verses that they'll remember for the next 70 years of their life. That is so powerful. And our job as a coach, you are on the front line. You are the grassroots of the quizzing ministry. Quizzing rises and falls with you. And this is meant to be part of your tool bag. This is meant to make your life easier because over an eight month season, if you're meeting one to two times a week, it's sometimes hard to come up with fresh ideas. And you find you're doing the same thing every week and the quizzers are bored and you're bored and you want to do something different and they do too and you're just not sure what to do. And so now we have 101 things that you could do. So let's look at some of them. Chapter one, motivating and team building. I, it's my personal belief that one of the greatest services that you could ever perform for your quizzers is to teach them how to pray. If you think about it, you're going to have about 50 to 60 practices with them. And if you pray with them at every practice, at the beginning, at every tournament, and in between and throughout the week, there are about a hundred times when you could pray together with them. And how great of a testimony would it be is if the greatest thing you did for them was you taught them how to pray. I can't describe to you how many individuals at the last year prayer and share at Senior Nationals this past year, 18 year olds, 19 year olds stood up, it was their last year in senior quizzing, they were giving their farewell speech and they said the greatest thing my coach did for me was they taught me how to pray. What a testimony. What a life impact you made. Whether you win a trophy, whether you win a single quiz, you just gave them something that will carry them for the rest of their life. And so that's why I put this as number one on 101 things to do, is pray together. Pray passionately. Pray fervently. Help them understand that they can move mountains with their prayer, that, that people can be healed of their sickness, that family members can return to the Lord. When I came into church at 15 years old, my family wasn't in church. Over the four years I was a quizzer, every person in my family was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And my brother's here with us today, and he was a great quizzer as well. 
And, and so pray together. So important. Something that you can remind your quizzers throughout the year is different goals that they accomplish. And uh, so I, over the last few years in junior quizzing, had my junior quizzers set a goal. And most of the time they were temporal goals. Like I want to earn my first individual trophy or we want to win a quiz this year. But sometimes they'll surprise you with the goals they set. They might say, I, wanna, I want my cousin to get the Holy Ghost this year. And, um, and so have your quizzers set goals together. Look down at number six, video chat with the district coordinator. Please let me know if I can help you motivate your quizzers. There's so many ways we can do this nowadays with um, the different video chat capabilities. And so at the beginning of a practice, you just let me know the time of the day. I'll call in or, you know, if you're in the area, I'll just show up at your practice. We've done that before for different churches. We'll show up and just give them a five-minute motivational speech and help them know that what they're doing matters and this is going to make a big difference in their life. So um, let me know if I can help you with that. You can have a guest speaker come in. You could do something unrelated to quizzing to motivate them. In the business world, a lot of times, um, business associates will go out and do something unrelated to what they do on a daily basis because it's team building exercises. You can do that for your quizzers as well. One idea I really like is our jigsaw dash, number nine. And the jigsaw dash has nothing to do with quizzing. But if you take a 250 piece puzzle and you tell one person to do it in 15 minutes, it's very hard to do. But if you tell your team you have to do a 250 piece puzzle in 15 minutes, it's very, very doable if they work together. And this will set in their mind this concept of quizzing is not an individual program. Sometimes it might seem that way depending on how you talk about it to your kids. But um, this will help them know we got to work together. Movie time, snack time, uh, having a quizzing party. We do a grand finale here at the end of the year, and it's a cookout, and it's a fun time for the kids to celebrate and get away from the board, from the quiz board. Chapter two, searching the scriptures. You know, that's really what we're all about. None of us would do this to, to ourselves if <laughs> we didn't believe in the meaning of Bible quizzing, that the scripture says, to search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life and they are they which testify of me and the scriptures say study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth it says the church in Berea was more noble than the church in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so we do this because we believe that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for proof for correction for instruction and in righteousness that's why we do Bible quizzing and so part of what you do as a coach is you're a spiritual leader to them. And chapter two is all about that. It's different ways and angles that you can incorporate uh, spiritual motivation into your practices. And so one thing that's really fun to do is number 16. We, in the United Pentecostal Church, we do Bible quizzing out of the King James Version of the Bible. It's my favorite version. I think it's very good. And so I, I do love the King James Version, but there are many other very great translations of the Bible in English that are available. And sometimes, if we're using terminology that may not be common to everyday speech, it may be hard for a young person to understand. And so one thing I challenge my quizzers to do on occasion is to Use something like uh, blueletterbible.com, biblegateway.com, use a parallel Bible, use a Bible at your church that uh, is in a different translation. Have your quizzers open up to their material and find something that stands out to them in a new way. When I read it out of this version, I, I saw something I didn't see before. Or you can play this game. Because if you really, if you get an interesting translation that's completely different than, than the King James, uh, one fun game to play is you read the verse and they have to buzz in and figure out which verse it is. And depending on the translation, that could be hard to do. So um, you can also do a dictionary moment. Each practice, finding an interesting word 
and defining it for the quizzer. And sometimes that can be very interesting, uh, particularly during uh, the Thessalonians. There were some words in there that um, mom and dad had to define for them. We just <laughs> ignored uh, that dictionary moment. And so it's important for the quizzers not to just do this to do this. You've got to understand what you're memorizing. And there are times when Old English terminology um, could mean the exact opposite of something that we know now. And so if I, to say in, in the book of Psalms uh, that uh, I want nothing, in, in the Old English, I want nothing means that I do not lack anything. And today, I want nothing means that I'd rather not have anything. <laughs> Completely different. One means I'm not lacking, and one means I think I need something. And so we have to be able to explain those, especially to our junior quizzers. So take time talking about the verses. Don't assume that they know what it is, just because they memorized it. Uh, you could, if you're really feeling, um, if you're really feeling 